Uh, Devin, one, what do you think of, of the look? How's the nose feeling and what are you seeing looking into the camera? But secondarily, uh, running that play, was that executed ex perfectly? And just the faith in DeAndre to, to call that for him. Um, honestly, forgot the first question. Just your nose. How, how it's feeling? Yeah, I mean, it feels better now. Um, it was a loss. I think it hurt a little bit more, but uh, it's good. Just have to go get some scans, uh, get a mask ready. Um, and the play, man, that's just execution at its finest. Um, took everybody, Jay passing it, DeAndre setting his man up. Um, Coach Monty, you know, believing in him and believing in us to, to, to run that. So, you know, it was a big play for us. And anytime you can come out with a win in the play playoffs, especially in a close one like that, I think it's big for your momentum. Next up is going to be David Brandt with the Associated Press and then Kellen Olson. Hey, Devin. I'm over here. Um, you know, it seemed like in those last couple of minutes, you guys got a couple of tough breaks. You know, it seemed like every call was going against you. You know, like everything that could have gone it wrong. Like that, didn't it? Yeah. Was going wrong, and then, but you guys never see that upset. You know what I mean? You always. What, what does that say about this team that you guys still manage to find a way to, to pull it out? I mean, that's just the name of this team. Uh, I mean, you can't change a call after it happens. You get one challenge. We use that early, and you know you kind of just have to deal with it. If you put your energy in the wrong place of, you know, trying to justify what happened two or three players prior, two or three plays prior you know, you, you're letting your team down. So, you know, it's the next play mentality. <clears throat> next up is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports, followed by Gina Mizell. Hey, Bo, good to see you. Looking good. Um, it, with the lob, you were here for Tyson. You're the only guy left for yeah. that team. I remember after the game, we said you thought Jay was crazy when he first did it in practice because yeah. you didn't know the rule. You know the rule now. When you set the screen, or are you in the, you're in the position to – did you think DA was good once you set it? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that was the only shot, like you said, when Tyson ran it at first, I think that was four or five years ago now. You know, I learned that rule, and I think it's something that a lot of people don't know. Um, even talking to Rondo at half court after the game, he was like, it don't count. I'm like, I've seen this, I've seen this movie before. It, it counts. It counts. So, you know, it's incredible play, um, incredible execution on all ends. But, again, Jay Crowder, that's a tough pass. Next is Gina Mizell with Suns.com, followed by Rachel Nichols. Yeah. Yeah. I knew the game was over, um, but you know, we just want to stay composed. You know, there's some extra hoorah going on on the court. Plays prior to, you know, they went into our crowd, opened up first team all defense, all that, and you know, the game was an over. Um, you know, so we just we just keep playing through. Um, so like I said, we're on to the next play and now we're on to the next game. Next up is Rachel Nichols with ESPN, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey guys. Uh Dev, have you ever had a nose injury before? Have you broken your nose ever before? Do you think it's broken now? And um when you look in the mirror, how do you feel you look? <laughs> uh, I've never had a broken nose. Um still pretty confident. Um I had I hadn't seen it until after the game. So I came back here and put a couple shots in there and put stitches on the top. Um, you know, my first time was seeing myself was after the game. And, they're telling me at, um, in the back when they put the season that it wasn't broken. Um, it's a little crooked. <laughs> it's a little crooked, so we'll see. I mean, you look like a winner. That's all I know. I appreciate that. <laughs> Next up is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Dave McMenamin. Yeah, yeah, this is both for, for, uh, both for you and everyone. And question for you, my thoughts about how setting the screen is the biggest sacrifice. Debate for a play. When you're setting it, I mean, that was like, it was simple. You was having people back, maybe taking through that from the end and setting that screen. Yeah, just understand how, you know, teams, you're in the guard. Um, I know they're not going to leave me, so any type of hit that I can get to make them change direction and get a uh, ounce of three. Sorry for keeping you guys on a little extra. We're all done for the night. Thanks for joining. But again, he had to set up his man for the ability to get.
get a hit. I know I keep saying it, but Jay Crowder's pass. That's, that's, that's a tough pass to make for his business. So that's pretty impressive. Are you watching it? Are you, is that, was, it, was it in slow motion? Yeah, yeah. When I say in the barber, I'm like, damn, he ain't just dunked it. <laughs> but uh, a piggyback off to his, to when you was talking to him, um, at the end of the game, you can get away with a lot of stuff. That's unselfish play by him. That's big time. It's big time. He sacrificed, made a screen, somebody else scored. A lot of players want to do that. That's in his position. So uh, kudos to him. He big time for that. Next up is Dave McMenamin with ESPN, followed by Sam Amick. Uh, I think it's just three, two or three up here. But cool. Yeah, and he's been capitalizing this opportunity of going from last year. Nice, not just a playoff career high, but a career high in the game line. What was your mindset coming into this one with this ball out? And how did you capitalize on it? Honestly, we just hold it down for C. Really, it's kind of crazy. So I'm just trying to hold it down to C get back. If it means me scoring, I'm, I'm willing to do it. If it means me pass, my only thing is no, no turnover. That's, that's all I'm doing. I'm trying to keep that same identity because uh, I'm the point guard. Uh, so I just try to come out there, hold it down for C, play my game, just live with the results. Next is Sam Amick with The Athletic, followed by Mark Spears. Well, for both of you guys, then you got physicality with playoff basketball, and then you got some protection. Like, what this is what it is. And yeah. the end there, and you're talking to Ronald and Cousins, but what's the message when you know this thing over and you're going home like that? Uh, I was just saying, go Big Blue. I can tell you that. That's all I was saying. Yeah, right. <laughs> go Big Blue. Who's physicality with it? Um, I mean that's that's what you guys just saw. I know you know they're an aggressive team. That's how they guard. And, you know it's not just Pat Bev. You know all those guys from the athletic wings and watching the previous series um, against Dallas and Utah. You know switching everything and you know trying to turn team over, turn teams over. Um, but you know we're figuring out. Um, we just have to stay aggressive, stay with what we do. You know, like we talked earlier, whether it's basketball plays or not, we got to move to the next one. No, we're not the one makes, making the call. And real quick, with, with CP, we know how he talks to everybody. You're going to hear him when he wants to not and leadership is going to do what he wants to do. But I mean, you've been talking to him on the side at all because you try to fill those shoes right now. For well, sure. I talk to CP every day. <laughs> now I'm trying, like, like I said, I'm trying to hold it down. Trust me, C's calling. <laughs> I probably got missed call already. C yeah. don't call. Yeah. But but that's what he do though. That's that's why he, who, that's why he is who he is. Like he he comes to communication. A lot of quick people don't do that, especially in his position. A lot of people don't do that. His communication at a high level. And that's big time for our team. Next up is Mark Spears with ESPN, followed by Richard Science. Well, first class and both like that, but uh, you really believe that actually happened. Like, well, let's see. The play? Yeah, you're walking out to the court. Yeah, I believe it can happen. I've seen it happen. <laughs> I've seen the play happen before. Um, and just understand, like I said, how they're going to guard. I know they're not going to leave, leave me. Um, yeah, I believe in 100%. And also, you have some work for the day after the game. What were you doing? Man, it's after every game. Man. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but you know, it's growth. Just continuously through through every game from game one of the playoffs. You know, he I feel like he flipped the switch and he turned it on. You know, he, he doesn't want to look back. He, he feels he feels his confidence is there. And he understands how much of a force he is. And I think he's figuring out his capabilities of, you know, being able to move, being able to guard, and at the same time setting screens and being in the right place. And tonight I see I mean he extended his, his mid-range too. So you know we can give it to you all type of ways. Next up, Richard Science with Fox 10, followed by David Aldridge. Yeah, uh, Devin, I just wanted to ask you, you know, kind of on that DeAndre Ayton uh, theme, you know, it's, it's only fitting that today was the NBA draft lottery. And how cool was it to see, you know, a, a guy that, you know, you've seen grow up before our very eyes, a guy that you've been hard on because you know his potential, you know, come up with such a big play. It, it, it was good, man. He's just, he's been working. You, know, you see the work behind the scenes. Um, 
makes you feel that much better when you see somebody that's successful. So, you know, it always has a big sweep. Thomas always has a big, big good. Um, he's went through some things in this league, and you know, he just continues to get better, um, mature himself. Um, and you know, he, he's a dominant force on our team, and we lean on him for a lot of things. We got time for three more. Next is David Aldridge with the Athletic, followed by Chris Haynes. Book, um, uh, you set a million screens in your life, a million picks in your life. Um, in that particular situation, though, time, score, all of that, what are the mechanics of making sure you get your body into Zubats that you don't push off so that there's no chance they can call an offensive foul or anything? What, what are you trying to concentrate on in that situation? Well, kind of like Cam said, you know, it goes down a late game situation. You can get, you can get away with a little bit more. Um, but I know if I can just make a change in direction or, you know, at least take a step under to give VA, you know, a, a chance to get his feet together or he was going to chase over. I knew my man was going to leave me. Um, so I tried to get the angle underneath him, you know, to, to give a clear lane to the run. And do you, uh, I'm sorry if you, I'm, I don't think you answered this before. Have you ever screened for somebody on a game winning basket before? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about that. Um, not to my recent memory. <laughs> if I wasn't slipping out of it to come to the ball, <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, that might be a first. Final two questions are going to be Chris Haynes with Turner and Mark Medina. Uh, look, it's, it's a little point now, but. Offensive foul that they ended up reviewing, like that, like the ref didn't call a foul. Yeah. Anything like, uh -huh. Was that something that you I've guys never seen before? Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that. I try to get an explanation. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, like, if, if, if he went back and reviewed the call, and should, and I guess, and it, showed, and it showed, happened to show that it was an offensive foul, I guess you guys put the ball back. On the sideline. Well, I was more disappointed because we had a wide open yeah. shot in the corner. Yeah. Um, and even if we got the ball back, you know, you let them set their defense when they just made a miscommunication that would have resulted in an open shot. So, um, I mean, we all we all need to work. You know? We all need to get better. Um, <laughs> taking ownership in. You know, we miss open shot. We miss something on our team. We come in. We say, "My bad." You know, we don't come back with a hundred excuses. We just move on to the next one. So. You know, that, that's all we're looking for out there is consistency and you know, a, a fair chance to play. Um, and that's what we're doing. But to answer your question, I didn't understand that. Final question is Mark Medina with USA Today. Hey, Devin, good to see you. If you don't mind me following up on the Clippers' physicality, I mean, how do you see it? To what extent do you just chalk it up to playoff basketball versus it being extra? Um, I mean, that's on the rest of the side. You know, I know, you know we have a team over here that – you know, if teams are trying to play jump defense like that and take me out the campaign, will, you know, he, he'll kill you. He'll go after you. you know, he's not he's not scared of the moment. He's not scared to go make a play. So, you know, there's a lot of denying, um, picking up full court. And I feel like that opens up opportunities and space for other people to get it going. And, you know, that's what we've been making on all season is that you know, we're a complete team, you know, with depth, even our players that haven't got a chance to get in the playoffs can play. Um, and we just we, we get after it every day as a team, and you know we don't we don't care who gets the strong. All we care about is what we did tonight. All right, thank you for the time, fellas. Appreciate it.